So I graduated uh, Collins College 2009. Uh, so also the height of the Great Recession. So I have an idea of what some of you guys are kind of facing and going through. Um, and right now where I'm with my business, I have obviously a recruiting business in the uh, hospitality industry. Uh, I work a lot with um, <clears throat> obviously folks in uh, hotels, restaurants, resorts, um, and largely what um, I think we're going to be talking about today is what you see on your screen. It's just uh, some of the things that I, I've come across certainly in, in conversations that uh, candidates have been um, looking at through specifically COVID-19, but um, just some of, the, some of the different tactics, strategies we can uh, help as you're maybe looking at entering into the, um, <clears throat> the job search here. Um, so I'm going to try, bear with me, because if I start going really fast, it's mostly because I, I want to make sure that I'm covering as much as I can. Uh, if we do, if any of one of us do end up getting into maybe a one-on-one -on -one phone call, uh, at which I am more than welcome to do, um, I, I do a lot of coaching with candidates and then through their, uh, their their search um you know i i encourage that uh that's that's largely in conjunction with clients that i work with as well but like i said it's also in conjunction with just more of a coaching process as well especially if you're up against like a uh you know a big interview or um just trying to navigate which which direction specifically you're trying to go um with with the changes that have kind of taken place recently in the industry um, one of the biggest starting points and that I, I face with candidates going into that job search and into the interview is really identifying, uh, you know, your story. Um, and for businesses, a lot of times you might find that it's called that elevator pitch, right? It's not too different from, um, yeah, creating your story and a quick way to identify, especially if you're going into like a networking event or an interview, just that that one minute uh, snapshot of how to identify what it is that you do, um, why are you different, what are your goals, what are the transferable skill sets that you know someone might be interested in continuing that conversation with you, right? Um, so I just kind of bullet pointed that here, uh, and if you want to share this deck, it's more than easily shareable. So um, I, you know. I would try to have this down. The, the next slide is actually just sort of a sample I tried to write out, but you know, if you're really trying to do something simple and quick, you could almost fill in the blanks with this here, right? Uh, you know, hi, I'm Sarah. I graduated from the Collins College in Hospitality Management. You know, this is where I worked at front desk on site at our hotel right now. Um, I've loved working with people um, and I've, uh, being just a, on and part of a solution oriented team. Uh, I just, I can't really, I can't wait to become part of a, and further my leadership responsibilities uh, and, and just kind of orient that towards your next goal. Uh, obviously you can, like I said, fill that into the blanks of what you actually do or what you're looking to do. The biggest idea here and probably one of the most commonly things that I run into on the recruiting side of things is that arbitrary statement of, um, I can do anything and not having an end goal of what you want to do. Um, I can't encourage it enough. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't walk in, into an interview or networking event without having um, an end goal uh, in mind of what you're actually working towards. And I realize, especially right now, that might be really difficult for some of you because there has been so much change. But those goals sometimes they can change and <laughs> again the biggest part there is is that employer when they're sitting down and interviewing for you is that they want to have an understanding that your uh your goals are relatable to what the position that it is that they brought you into interview for the the challenge that they're having at that point in time um so it can be a pretty scary thing if they've got a candidate sitting across from them and and they're hearing, well, I can do anything and I don't really have, you know, one definite direction. 
um, try to orient that in a more definite way of, yes, my name's Anne. I uh, have a background in operations and my long-term goal is to be a director of operations. Um, you know, it might not be a director of operations role. It might be a, a, a restaurant manager role, but what their that employer in that situation is hearing is, oh, this is someone that we could grow and develop. And um, now that's retention. And now you're the less risky candidate that they're start, starting to um, see. They're, they're starting to see a relationship, right? Uh, so try to orient that goal because, again, that's where that relationship starts to uh, grow. Um, networking is going to be a huge strategy for, you know, now really more than ever. Um, most jobs that are posted uh, are, are really kind of the need to fill posted the, are at the point where they really are being need to fill, right? Um, most, most jobs that are available are really never advertised. So there may be, you know, being talked about internally or uh, they're being passed around from referral. So it's kind of, it falls on your shoulders to become part of that intertwined network of who, who knows who and how do I, how do I leverage again, back to that elevator pitch, how, how do I leverage my skill set to become this relevant thing in our industry? Um, and, and not just in a way that's about me, right? But how can I also help others become more intertwined? How can I help others move forward in their job so that they, we can all help each other move forward? That's, that's where um, it, it stops being so difficult to get yourself a, a job, but you're, you you are it's a symbiotic relationship you're helping each other um, move forward into positions and suddenly people are reaching out to you um, so investing into a networking element of this is uh, like I said it, it's just more couldn't be more crucial uh, a time um, LinkedIn is going to be I'd say your your biggest strategy and and best friend right now um, as you as you are applying to positions uh, one of the big things that can happen and maybe some of some of you have started to see this but job boards have this wonderful tendency of becoming uh, you know just kind of black holes and and there's a fall off that can happen there so the more that you can try to connect uh, after applying to a specific position that you've uh, become really interested in or um, company that you've become really interested in, trying to engage uh, with that company is really important. Um, and not in, a, in a, not in a stalkery kind of way, but uh, following up in a professional way, following up and even if it's setting up an informational interview, um, you know, it might not be an, a job offer that happens overnight. Like I said, it might be an informational interview. It might be a series of conversations that happens in several months type of scenario. But the idea is that you're getting that conversation going. Um, you're developing that relationship. Uh, so LinkedIn is, is huge. Um, and absolutely sending the follow-up, connecting. If you have an interview that you've set up, um, connecting with your interviewer, getting an idea of their background, um, so you have talking points, you have an understanding of, hey, this is where this person has come from. This is where, um, you know, these are organic questions that you can come up with through the interview. Uh, and if, if you don't get hired, guess what? The, that interview is, if nothing else, it's a networking opportunity, isn't it? Um, you might be hired down the road, um, you might have gotten along great with one or two of the people that you interviewed with in, in that process. It just for one reason or another, maybe wasn't quite a fit there or one person that you interviewed with, it wasn't quite a fit. Um, so always connect with the people that you are interviewing with uh, because it, you know, those, those relationships are, are hugely valuable. Um, Meetups meet and networking events, also really important to do research and plan for. Uh, 
especially if you're going to, you know, uh, a job fair or a meetup group, you know, I, I'd really encourage trying to get an understanding of who's going to be there so that you can try to identify some of the key, key people again that you can, um, that you really would like to be meeting and engaging with. You, you'll have a set amount of time that you're there. So, you know, again, once you have a chance to meet these people, you'll, you'll still want to do the same follow up. You'll still want to thank them for your time back to LinkedIn. Right. Um, and, uh, obviously the alumni association, <laughs> um, let's see. I bullet pointed some of the best practices just in, in black and white form here, just for you to have on hand, but this is hopefully stuff you guys know. Um, you know, be professional as you're attending events or going into an interview. Uh, this is less of a, we're telling you or the, your, your professor or someone is telling you to do something and, and really so much more of this is you and who you're presenting to a prospective employer. Um, if you are someone that is a business owner, how are you presenting your business? Think of it that way. I think there were a couple, couple people that had travel agencies and, and businesses of their own. Uh, I, would, I would think of yourself in the job seeking pers uh, perspective the exact same way. How are you represented? Did you come prepared with resumes? Did you come with a pen, an extra pen, an extra few resumes? Um, was your cell phone ringing the entire time throughout the interview um, or throughout the entire time that you were networking? Uh, did you send a follow-up? Did you say thank you for the time? Um, all of those are reflective of you and your level of professionalism. So I'd just be aware of that. Um, and let's see. Uh, on we the no longer have him during the week, but we do have him on Saturdays. I think... I, I think someone's there, yeah. off mute. There we go. So again, in looking at, uh, at the application process, I just, again, wanted to kind of bring back talking about your end goal because that, that really is what it comes down to. Um, unfortunately, we've got, we've got technology that is definitely part of the equation and um, with applicant tracking systems being just a part of the process, uh, you know, having relevant keywords in your resume in accordance to the specific job that you're applying to is really important. So um, make sure as you're applying to a specific job that it's not just one fell swoop, click and apply, click and apply, click and apply. Uh, if you're really interested in that position, I would really try to make a point to look at that job description and adjust those relevant keywords according to that specific job description. What an applicant tracking system is designed to do is pull keywords uh, to sift through the relevant resumes for hiring managers, recruiters, um, so they're seeing the relevant re resumes. If your resume doesn't pull up, if it's not re relevant, it's gonna get filtered out. Um, and that's again where LinkedIn becomes very relevant because you want to be able to, the more you're able to uh, close that communication gap, connect with a hiring manager, connect and follow up about a job uh, application, the more readily able you are to close that communication gap, potential follow up that might have happened with an applicant tracking system um, and, and move into a potential interview phase. Um, and I would always, you know, and th that just was my next point is just following up the hiring manager. <clears throat> Um, I know you guys have had a couple speakers that are going to be talking about interviewing specifically, so I won't uh, hang too, too tightly on this one, but, and I talked a little bit about this already, but I can't, I really can't encourage enough. I would it, try to take some time um, and maybe even try to understand what the risk is for the, the employer. The cost to hire process, um, anytime you are actually entering into an interview, it is uh, a business decision that that employer is making for you. So very often in the conversations I have with candidates, it's 
uh, it's a little too lackadaisical um, in that sense that, oh no, I got this. I can, I can, you know, um, it's, it's about me. There's a little bit too much of a, it's about me. And that, that conversation is very much both ways. Absolutely. But there needs to be an element of empathy towards the employer. And especially now and where we are today, because employers in our industry, especially are taking on, um, a major risk with any employee that they're hiring. So the cost of hire in ordinary times is great. It's risky. It's, it's a big, um, deep breath of, oh my gosh, is it going to work out? But now we're, we're in a time and an economic environment that is even more so, oh my gosh, am I hiring the right employer or employee? So I tried to take a little bit of time and research just what, what is it about hiring someone that is, makes it so uh, costly? Why are employers so nervous about spending um, on, on a new employee? And have an understanding because that's going to give you, a, like I said, a little bit of empathy towards where that interview is coming from. And some, sometimes employers are... Um, interviews vary, right? Some people wear it a little bit more on their sleeves and they're maybe a little bit more inter interrogative when they're uh, interviewing. Others are more empathetic. Um, but this is going to give you, I think, a lot more insight into uh, that having that ability to have an actual conversation um, and be able to ask those questions, get into the conversation, ask the why. What's the problem? someone's only hiring a company is only hiring because they have an actual root problem in their business that they need to solve so your goal anytime that you go into an interview is really trying to understand what that problem is and alleviate that stressor or that concern of why you would be the riskier candidate the riskier riskiest choice to help them solve that problem, right? Right now, it's more difficult because there are more candidates out there. Um, and you're gonna have to help walk them through your why a little bit more concisely. One of the most commonly asked interview questions uh, that trips candidates up is why, what interested you in our company? And very frequently, the direction that candidates go with that is, um, well, I'm looking for someone, I'm looking to work with a company that can give me this, give me this, X, Y, and Z, give me, 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 me this, right? It's less about the me there, right? That this is about empathy. This is about talking about why that company is so different. Um, and it's, it's absolutely about identifying what made you as a candidate through all the other jobs on all the other job boards out there decide to choose um, that particular role with that particular company and your role in answering that specific question is to let them know listen you guys are different this particular role is motivating because of all the jobs i've looked at this is the culture the innovation, the, the dedication you have to your employees. Um, these, are, these are the reasons that I'm, I'm talking to you and I want to partner with you. Um, it is scary as an employer to talk to so many candidates that are potentially just trying to get to, just get a paycheck and move on to another position. And that is the feeling, absolutely the feeling right now. And, and with where we are in our economic environment as well. So you, it's gonna be part of your challenge to let them know you're not just there for the short term, you're there with them in partnership for the long term. Um, so, again, I bullet pointed some of that in there. Uh, most of this you already know. If, if you don't know to arrive early, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> um, then, then we really should talk. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, you know, if, if you have questions about some of these bullet points, I won't spend too much time on them. Just let me know. We can kind of chat about it too. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite slides. Rejection. And I think just generally the emotional quotient of the job search process and ways to manage it. Um, rejection is, there's opportunity to what, what can be rejection and, and a lot of rejection rejection that can happen in looking for a new position. Um, try not to forget that with any interview, uh, with any conversation that you have throughout this process, that there is opportunity, you're connecting with people. Um, and although it might not have been a position that, that worked out, uh, you know, it might be a position that allowed you to connect for future position, right? Um, it's also an opportunity to talk to um, maybe the hiring manager or the recruiter that you talk to and figure out, shoot, you know, is there something that I, I'm not doing right? Or, um, hey, you know, I'd, I'd really like to be in this role and, you know, I can't help it, man, but I, I just, this company, I still really want to be part of your, your brand and company. Can you walk me through some of the things that I, I really would need to achieve in order to be a qualified candidate next time around? Um, those are going to be questions and factors that, you know, will be remembered as um, should you come back and, and reply. Uh, so don't underestimate rejection. Because it, it, it might, although it might not feel great, it also isn't necessarily, like I said, the worst thing either. It's sort of this hidden opportunity. Um, and if, if it wasn't for a fit for them or the employer, it probably wouldn't have been a, the best fit for you either. So uh, it's okay to not try to fit a round peg into a square hole, or I'm maybe saying that backwards. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's an okay thing. I think, like I said, there are some ways definitely to manage um, that process, the job search process and, and you know, uh, going through and applying to different jobs. And uh, obviously again, kind of the black hole of, of maybe not hearing back or, um, and if, if there's anyone that's worked in sales uh, and is familiar with, uh, KPIs or key performance indicators, I would suggest trying to adopt a mentality of applying just a, a KPI process to your job search process. Um, you know, it'll allow you to have a sense of um, knowing that even though maybe some a position didn't work out, you still have, you know, X, Y, and Z opportunities that you're still working on. Uh, maybe another interview coming on down the line and it'll alleviate especially if you've got another interview coming down the line and you're maybe going into an interview today or tomorrow you know it'll alleviate some of that weight of I've got nothing else coming so having just um, a constant flow of activity uh, is the idea there which you know maybe having a goal of 10 interview or not 10 interviews 10 um, applications that you send out per week um, trying to talk to three or following up with three, uh, three of those applications uh, per week, you know, and uh, getting an idea of maybe, and maybe they need to be far north of that. I'm just throwing out numbers right now, but um, you know, just just trying to get an idea of incoming activity, so you're you're not feeling like I'm not doing anything, and and it's it's activity that's not leading me anywhere. Um, and I would say the same thing for networking activity, you know, trying to do two, two types of networking activities. Some of those now are probably virtual for a lot of us, right? Um, just finding different ways to engage with, with people. Um, and I included, um, my contact information here as well. So if you guys have, like I said, um, if you're wanting to look at, uh, I don't know, just role playing different interview strategies or, you know, some of those tougher, and not even necessarily tougher, but some of those more commonly asked interview questions. Um, 
with the candidates that I work with and I, I, I never, part of the agreement with any candidate that I work with and the client relationships that I have is that we, we will not send out a candidate to an interview without ever going through a, a prep session before. And part of that is um, a full walkthrough of <clears throat> understanding some of those commonly asked interview questions, understanding what a candidate is planning on wearing the day before the interview. Some of that sounds really silly, but uh, I, I can't tell you more often than not uh, some of the things that, um, and to nobody's fault, some of, some of the times it's, it's, I think I should wear this, and it turns out um, it's actually a, a different, you know, the, the corporate, it would be better to wear maybe a slightly different version in the first interview. Or, um, so I'm happy to kind of go out over some of those things if you guys are, are wanting to connect. Um, I'm, I'm just happy to help in any way that, that I can. <clears throat> Wonderful. So, I, uh, Anne, do you mind if I post the, the Google Drive link in the, in the yeah, chat? Yeah, no. Folks? Go for it. Mm -hmm. All right. I will do so. So, I think um, we are ready to open it up for questions um, for, for that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to see if anyone has any questions in the, in the chat. Um, okay, so Eddie asks, since most recruiters are working from home, how do we get a hold of them if they aren't checking their office voicemail? Uh, well, hopefully they're still working with their, their voicemails too. <clears throat> um, my, my suggestion, um, I, I don't know who you're, I don't know who you're trying to connect with Eddie, <laughs> but uh, a, a, reputable, a reputable recruiter should, should be, you know, connecting or, or you know, getting back to you within, I would say, 24 to 48 hours. Um, so I, I can't speak for everyone, but that should be, um, and they, they should have, they should have connection to their, even, even a cell phone, they should have connection to their office voicemails. Um, one more question from the chat. How can we get recruiters to tell us the real reason that we were rejected from the job? Could you say that one more time? Yes. Uh, how do we get recruiters to tell us the real reason why we were rejected? I would openly express um, your interest and, and ask, I'd just say, you know, um, Thank you again for the time and the update. I would love to be a part of the company and was very interested in, in the position and the role. I'd also love to know, you know, understand, completely understand if it's not a fit right now, but I'd, I'd love to gain some insight um, into maybe the reasonings or the uh, why, if it's possible. Um, if not now, then, you know, for in the future, so that it's something I might be able to work towards. Um, again, you know, a, a, a reasonable company or, or a recruiter and hiring manager is going to really respect hearing that and they're, they're going to want to nurture that relationship. So they'll respond, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, and I was thinking about maybe doing a quick uh, breakout room. Do you have a challenge or a question that uh, we could we could do into a, a breakout room for for folks? Um, yeah. Well, are you as far as in specific um, area like? Yeah. Could you or? maybe do something for networking or how mm -hmm. to you know like you know that kind of thing? Any any question that you have that you would want their ideas with? On? Yeah, I think networking would probably be the biggest strategy right now. And, and uh, if you were to do a breakout room, just a, a, a practice of um, appropriate follow up and responses interacting with, with hiring managers as you're going through an up, you know, applying to positions. Because um, that's going to be the biggest 
you could do a lot of breakout rooms here. But <laughs> that's going to be the biggest that's, thing yeah. that, that really, uh, I mean, in the end, it, it's just about being you and getting into that interview phase is really, it's, it's just so crucial because the, the, where we are today is just such a, it is so technology driven and the challenge right now is getting beyond that ATS filter. It's getting beyond the, the job board black hole. Um, you know, I think, like I said, there are other talking points of once you actually get to the interview point, but getting those interviews. And so making sure that you have the right messages that are being sent out. Um, I think that would be a really good, you know, type of breakout room to have. Uh, okay, we have a few more questions in the chat. Do you have uh, tips for interviewing virtually over Zoom? Yes, yes, I was going to go into that. I'm glad someone asked that. Um, Zoom is a little weird, right? Uh, the camera's up here. <laughs> be yourself, be professional. Um, general same rule, interview rules apply, right? Dress professionally. Um, or in accordance with how, you know, if, if you're going to an interview for a brewery and everyone is dressed in uh, flannel and jeans, um, try to dress according to how, and it's a manager position, try to dress in accordance to how your managers and your interview is going to dress. Try to get an understanding of how that person interviewing is, their attire will be. If not, then business professional, right? Um, but the eye contact thing is probably the biggest thing that throws people because of where the camera is and because where of, and you're in the middle of my screen, right? Um, try as hard as it is to look up in the camera because eye contact is still such a big thing. And I'm doing it right now. It's hard. I'm talking with my hands. You see my hand all up in the screen. Um, so it might be, again, it's one of those things you might have to get used to and, and just practice. Um, get on the phone. Uh, if you want to get on a phone call with me, you can, you can get on a phone call with me. If you want to get on a phone call with your friends, uh, everybody is zooming right now. Right. And just practice looking up in the right area, uh, and check in with them. Say, is it, do I look weird talking right now? Um, they'll probably tell you. <laughs> um, all right. Awesome. Um, looking here. All right, uh, what is the workaround for a system generated rejection email when you don't have the opportunity to reply directly to the recruiter? Yeah, um, listen, so I, I think I'm stepping right back into my job search in 2009 here. I didn't even pay mind to a lot of the system generated uh, emails I would receive. Oftentimes because I would look at the position and uh, decide this was system generated and I'm a really qualified candidate for that. So I think this has to be a little bit of a case by case scenario. Um, are you a qualified candidate for the job that you applied to? <laughs> One. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if you really believe that you are, then I would say try to get in contact with someone at the company. And again, this is where I believe LinkedIn to be a very resourceful tool. Um, and in a respectable way, right? Uh, this is this is not and the recruiter saying go out and try to spam, relentlessly spam recruiters or hiring managers. That there's, I mean, please don't do that. Uh, it's not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> um, but sending, uh, this is where that communication gap is. It's important, and networking is important. Get to know um, who might might be able to get you in contact with that because there's going to be a lot of that that happens and the the fortunate part about where you are is that there are a lot of people that know and can help you probably close that gap um so i would i wouldn't hesitate um to like i said everything we just talked about to be networking like crazy, I wouldn't give up necessarily on that position. I would, I would just do everything that I can to, to make sure it was a legitimate um, rejection. All right. And, about, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. 
I was gonna say we have about five minutes. We have a couple more questions if you wanted to wrap wrap that up. No, that's okay. You're fine. Okay. All right. Uh, next question from Kelly. How do we best assess our value when applying to jobs in new industries? Um, so I think that might be a better question that we talk about one-on-one -on -one because it's a probably full-on conversation. But I think the the key of it is focusing on transferable skill sets. Um, hospitality, this industry is going to give you a whole, I mean, just a dynamic range of transfer, transferable skill sets that lead you into many, many other industries. So um, with that comes, like I said, just many opportunities, whether, and not just industries, but different roles. Um, and that is very, a very, very beneficial thing from coming um, from this industry that I think a lot of other industries maybe don't have the, the as great of an opportunity to speak on. You guys uh, come from an industry where you've had to work in high, uh, high speed uh, environments where you have to think on your feet, problem solve, keep people happy, um, and uh, manage teams with a thousand moving parts at any given time. Um, that is a difficult and very, very challenging environment. And um, the skill sets, and again, we can, we can delve into that further if, if you want, but uh, the skill sets from, from those environments are very, very trans transferable. And it's just trying to dial into the specific role and the specific um, area, industry that you're trying to highlight. Um, all right, next, good. Uh, next question. Um, you mentioned finding a job for the long term. How do you deal with companies that do not pay a living wage, health, or other, other benefits, and how do you maximize these? Okay, so yeah, I would start with targeting. Are you are you interviewing at, at these positions? I guess I need a little bit more information. I mean, are, what what types of roles are are you interviewing for? question was from Ryan. This is, yeah, I guess more general, just looking yeah. at landscape now and just seeing how companies are always trying to maximize their own profits and not necessarily yeah. living wages and, you know, not, not pay benefits if they can help it, et cetera. How do you, how do you maximize your, I guess your own, it might go kind of with the last question where you're, you're, you're really trying to maximize your own uh, abilities and, and try to mm -hmm. make your seem as good as possible, but just weighing that balance really that's kind of general question yeah um i might not have the best answers it's, it's going to be symptomatic of the environment right um there's going to be right now at least probably a lot of competition for even positions that aren't offering the typical benefits and packages that were out there four months ago uh so I would be as competitive as I can. I would still be going after the, you know, what you want to go after as far as a position, right? The economy eventually will recover. So you're keeping in mind your end goal, right? Like what you want to do, um, where you where you want to and what you want to grow into is, is paramount um, because that's what's going to, um, that's what's going to evolve here. Uh, so if that position is offering that growth potential, you know, in a few years we'll, we'll be through, you know, what we're going through here. Um, but yeah, you know, unfortunately there's probably going to be a lot of that. And I, I'd like to paint a rosier picture there. Um, it just, it's, it's kind of the tough, tough part of, I think, where we're sitting right now. I appreciate it. And, and rosy pictures are not what I'm looking for at this point. So Yeah, it. I would, I mean, I, I like I said, the, the economic recession of 2009 and, and what I saw, um, I would be geared to be as competitive as possible for the, the job that you want and that you're qualified for. But with the expectation that, like I said, the, the economy it will recover, um, but, but dig in, like go after it and hard because there's going to be 
um, there is opportunity there it is it, it, this is just a, it's this weirdly cyclical thing because it's a pandemic that's caused this recession but recessions are cyclical it is part of so you know kind of take it tuck that under the belt um, you'll be next recession that comes through you'll you'll know what that is and it's you'll be good to go all right, and we have one last question. What is your timeline or strategy for following up after the interview? Definitely send a thank you immediately within 24 hours of the interview. Um, of the interview, of networking and meetings, that you've met five people at a networking event, just say, hey, this is Anne. We met um, at the event last night. I just wanted to say thanks again for um, the chat loved what you had to say, da, 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 mention maybe a couple things that you, you talked about. Um, but really want to follow up within 24 hours. Um, if it's more of an informational type of interview, uh, you know, again, that thank you is, is crucial. And that may also be your opportunity to send over any kind of previous work um, in, uh, in that time as well. Um, informational interviews, just as a side note, I want to make sure that certain questions are avoided in those conversations. Uh, that's, that's really an opportunity to gain insight and information into a career, into a role, into um, what someone does, how they got there, right? But it's not really the time where you ask, can you get me this job? Can you get me this interview? Um, how much money do you make? There are certain questions that you really want to stay away from. Also, try to stay away from those in the networking realm as well. Um, let let those come organically. Those opportunities or offers come organically. Awesome. Uh, well, Anna, we'd like to, to say a big thank you to you for sharing your expertise this morning with, with us. We really appreciate it. Um, we will hang out for about eight more minutes, I think. If anyone has any uh, questions, um, we call this the after party, so you are all welcome um, to, to stay for a little less formal, uh, you know, get together. Um, I will re-copy and paste Anne's contact information um, as well as the presentation at the bottom here of the chat so you can access, so everyone can have access to it. We have one more. Eddie, do you want to give a little 30-second blurb for yourself for two weeks from now? Absolutely. Actually, I'd love to do one, uh, two of them. I have one coming up next Tuesday on August 4. This is at 6 p.m. for the Alumni Association, and I'm talking about uh, succeeding in today's economy. So for the newbies on the call that haven't attended one of these summer series events yet, please join. That one, uh, a sign-up, uh, much like the one you did on Everbright, but this particular sign-up gets you my book. So uh, you're going to be asked for your address, please fill that in so I can mail you my book. And um, if, you don't, if you didn't get the invitation, please uh, you know, link, look me up on LinkedIn and I'll share that uh, registration page with you. And uh, next, on the, fourth, on the 11th of August, I'm piggybacking on Anne's presentation today and I'm focusing on winning the interview. So it's, uh, it'll touch on a lot of the things that she covered, but we'll go into more in-depth um, information. So, and great job today. We learned a lot. Thank you very much for priming them for my presentation on the 11th. Yeah, you bet. Nice to see you. <laughs> likewise, likewise. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you again, everyone. We really appreciate your, your time and, and uh, welcome to the new students that are joining us. Uh, we are so happy to have you here in the fall. So thank you so much. Like I said, we'll hang out for about uh, six more minutes now if anyone has any questions for Anne directly. Have a great day, a great week. Thank you. Take care, guys. Yes. <laughs>
Um, just let yourself be notified by recruiters and hiring managers. Um, one has a, I just, uh, I think they just added it recently, but it's a, a COVID option. Um, I, I've always liked the premium option, which basically for recruiters and hiring managers, just gives us kind of a tag on this end that says you're open to opportunities. So for the public, you know, it doesn't show that or anything like that, but for anyone that has a position that is open that they're hiring for, it lets us know, okay, they're interested in being reached out to. Um, your, I, the response rate for candidates, which is good for you, is going to go up, should go up. Um, you also have in mails that you can use as a candidate where you can reach out to recruiters uh, or hiring managers for positions. So that's also really uh, becomes an asset as you, you know, you're going through and applying to uh, positions. And if you haven't heard back about a role or um, like Anne was talking about earlier, if you got maybe a rejection back from a position where you just sort of thought, huh, really? It just seems like it would have been something that I, you know, I want to follow up on. I, you know, maybe they filled it internally or something happened, but in any case, I'm just, I just want to follow up and express interest. Um, sometimes I've seen um, that happen and they needed to close down. Uh, sometimes they have to close down positions because of time, time limits. So the, it, the role still might be active. So it's, it's always good, you know, to fall, um, to follow up. Uh, you just don't necessarily know what's happening with that, uh, that role. <clears throat> Great, thank Great. you. I know LinkedIn is, you know, kind of one of the primary options now and, and newer for yeah. myself, so appreciate that. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, that said, and as much as I've talked to think about LinkedIn, um, it overlaps so much with the other resources that we have out there and networking, which is just so huge. So I, I really wouldn't um, use it as a sole resource. I, I really would try to, you know, do some searches and see what's out there as far as, um, yeah, different meetups, different job fairs. Uh, the Alumni Association really is an incredible resource. Um, <clears throat> and just really ju just start building, you know, a, a network of, of people that you can help, that they can, you know, you guys can each help each other. Um, the cool part about what's happening right now is there is a very openness uh, in our industry of just that. I mean, everybody is legitimately in a very similar position of um, needing to help each other. So there's, there is a very real openness there. Um, and, and I think that that's been very different from many other times. I just had another question about uh, scope. You were talking about uh, solving companies' problems and yeah. you know, help, helping identify what the, what the scope of their problem is and then attacking the root cause, right? Yeah. How, how do you get companies to be so, uh, excuse me, how do you get companies to be honest about what the scope of their problems is? Is it, is it mismanagement that's causing this, this lapse in uh, why they need so many more customer service agents? Or how do you get to the bottom of that kind of stuff? You ask. You ask, so you're hiring right now, right? I mean, that's like I said, if, if someone's hiring, they've got, they've got a, a challenge. They've got something going on in their business. It might be a good problem, right? They're growing like crazy. You gotta hire more people. <laughs> but, but the problem there is that they're growing like people and they're growing like crazy and they're shorthanded because they can't keep up with the demand. So it's a good problem. It's not necessarily a bad problem, but you know, a good way to ask that is, hey, you know, can you tell me about some of the um, challenges and you know some of the you know the opportunities that you guys are seeing as a company right now, right? Because now you're you're not just talking about the challenges. You're talking about also some of the good things that they're seeing happen for the business as well, uh, and and you you do want to know about both those uh, both both those things. Yeah, thank you. 